This is a schematic of a Japanese sludge vacuum track that includes dewatering. My colleague, Professor Hidenori Harada from Kyoto University, shared it with me. Nihango ga wakarimasen. Unfortunately, that means my Japanese is not good enough to translate the slide for you. But in this module, I will tell you a bit about dewatering trucks, and we will also learn about other innovations that are being made in transportation of fecal sludge. Following this module, you will be able to list alternatives for optimizing the transport of fecal sludge that are ready for scaling up, provide examples of potential ways to improve collection of fecal sludge, and understand considerations for implementation. I will cover the following four ideas to optimize service provision of collection and transport. A call center, GIS tools, transfer stations, and dewatering trucks. All of these concepts have to do with reducing distances that water has to be trucked or moved around a city because water is heavy and expensive to transport. These concepts can also help increase service provision at the household level and reduce illegal dumping. ONOS, the National Sanitation Utility of Senegal, with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, is piloting a call center for emptying services in Dakar, Senegal. The concept is that instead of individually calling trucks or service providers, when customers want their on-site containment emptied, they can directly phone the call center. The operator knows the location of the house and then gets bids from three different truck drivers for the cost of emptying. The one with the lowest bid gets the job. Over three years, they have had over 5,000 calls, as shown in blue, many of which end up in emptying being performed. It is thought that the calls that do not end up in emptying might be used to get a competitive bid for another emptier. The average price for emptying with an 8 cubic meter truck before the call center was 49 US dollars and after three years had gone down to 42 US dollars. The call center is relatively straightforward to run with only one supervisor and two people to answer the phones. A business model was developed and first piloted prior to the current scaling up phase. Other critical aspects of the project include an organized group of formally recognized emptiers committed to improving the sector, and training, certification, and supervision of emptiers to ensure that they are doing their work in a hygienic fashion. It is also being evaluated whether the trucks would be willing to install GPS trackers so the call center could select drivers closest to the customers, reducing transport distances. Also important is adequate communication and promotion to customers. Oh. This is a commercial that was used in the promotion campaign in Dakar. This is a study we conducted in Kampala, Uganda, where 34 trucks voluntarily let us outfit them with GPS trackers, and we tracked 5,653 emptying operations over three months. The GIS analysis of all these emptying events provided a powerful tool to understand emptying service provision in Kampala. The results, together with demographic data, were used to identify service provision by density, income level, and non-residential areas. GIS data could also be used as a powerful planning tool, for example, optimal locations for transfer stations. Key again to this study was a strong emptiers association with a desire to improve the sector and voluntary commitment to participate by the emptiers. The publication and this report with all the maps can be downloaded on our website. Another innovation that is frequently discussed, but in reality rarely implemented, is transfer stations. The goal of transfer stations is to reduce transport distances 
and make transport more efficient, thereby also reducing illegal dumping. Transfer stations could be mobile or fixed, like the tank shown on the cover of this report, which can be downloaded on the internet. More information can also be found in Chapter 4 of the Fecal Sludge Management book. Transfer stations could be especially valuable for areas that are not accessible by trucks and are served by manual emptiers, who can only transport sludge very short distances. The transfer station could then be emptied by a truck and driven to a treatment plant. However, units trialed in Ghana failed due to the secondary collection, which was not frequent enough so sludge settled too much or overflowed and garbage was also a problem for the vacuum trucks. If dewatering could be incorporated into transfer stations, then they could even be located near existing sewer networks. Once solids are removed, effluent could be discharged to the sewer, and only dewatered solids would have to be transported, greatly reducing transport volumes and cost. For example, here in Kampala, where only about 20% of the population is served by sewers, our GIS analysis shows there are lots of emptying events located near the existing sewer network. Of course, the impact to downstream treatment plants would have to be carefully evaluated. Other difficulties with transfer stations are that it is always difficult to find available space in urban areas. They can be expensive and NIMBY, convincing people to accept fecal sludge handling in their backyard. This brings us to the truck we saw in the introduction, which is a dewatering vacuum truck for fecal sludge in Japan. Trucks like this were first in use there from 1980. In the 90s, the technology was improved, and in 2006, the Ministry of Environment started promoting their use. There are now several hundred in operation. There is a submerged pump and a drum screen for solid liquid separation. This portal is the inspection window where the emptier observes the sludge and manually adjusts doses of coagulants for dewatering and aeration for mixing. The effluent goes directly back into the on-site system as treatment relies on the bacterial community. This example is from Brazil, used for desludging of septic tanks. This, on the other hand, is a mobile dewatering unit for wastewater treatment plants. In smaller towns where it is too expensive to build dewatering at treatment plants, this unit can travel around and dewater sludge for multiple treatment plants. You can see how the concept of the dewatering trucks could be developed into mobile or fixed dewatering transfer stations. To further this concept, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has been working on the Omni Ingester. The goal of this project is to develop a dewatering truck that can also fully treat the effluent so it can be directly discharged to the environment. Emptiers would be able to empty lots more systems in fewer trips by safely eliminating the liquid on site. The goal is also that it would be able to empty any type of on-site system, in contrast to the previous examples, which are for more specific applications like septic tank sludge or wastewater sludge. Therefore, it would need to be two types of units, one for more wet systems and another for drier. It would have a pit side unit, allowing access to sites not accessible by trucks, and be able to empty all material within, including rubbish. The truck has not been actualized yet, but research has included investigating mobile pumps, ways to separate and clean debris, an electrochlorinator for effluent treatment, and of course, mechanisms for dewatering the sludge. This is a rotary drum thickener the biggest challenge of these trucks so far is developing online, real-time dosing of coagulants to be able to deal with such a wide range of sludge characteristics. This is a research question for more development. In this module, you learned about innovations that are ready to be scaled up for fecal sludge, in addition to ones that are still being developed. 
All of the examples could improve the collection of fecal sludge, but all have different difficulties in terms of what to manage for scaling up. Thanks for joining, and see you next time.